The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And it's Friday. Time for Case to review a movie he hasn't seen. A big movie that all of us have seen for the most part. And we've been doing this for several weeks. And this started for literally years of every time making a reference to a movie. Even this morning earlier on when Dickie Barrett was in here mentioned Clueless. Case doesn't know the reference of anything to say about Clueless, the movie Clueless. You've been seeing Clueless? Yeah. I, I haven't. It seems like something I would like, but I have not watched it. Oh, I know about the, there's like the yellow dress in the movie or whatever. That seems popular. Sure. That's all I know about Clueless. It's, a two-piece. it's about a two-piece set. It's not really a dress. <laughs> what a story Dickie Barrett told us, too. That So the Muddy Muddy Boss Tones are in the movie Clueless as the punk band in there. And across they were filming it in a warehouse across the street from the OJ trial while it was going on. That's when they were filming Clueless. Woof. <laughs> That's so a lot amazing. to unpack. The Kardashians were just running around the parking lot playing. Exactly. So we had a plan to do Ghostbusters today, and Case watched Ghostbusters because he hasn't seen another big movie that he hasn't seen and give a review from a 25-year-old's lens. But then OJ died. So <laughs> that changes everything. Everybody, a lot of the crew members checked in, but then we also talked about it after the show and said, you know what? He should do the naked gun. Which I had never seen before. Never seen that. I had no context of OJ. Being an actor. Right. And I said, well, I want to see what that's like. I want to check that out. <laughs> I want to see what it's like. <laughs> I would like to take a gander at that. Oh, so coming up here at 8.55, we'll do that uh, uh, just about 10 minutes away or so. Case reviewing The Naked Gun. But first, as we, in this 24 hours from OJ's death, and we have uh, haven't played this in a little bit this morning, Terry, today, is uh, Norm McDonald getting his due, I guess, in the last 24 hours now, he was fired from Saturday Night Live for the jokes he made about O.J. because the head of the network was best friends of O.J. back then in the 90s. So these are real-time jokes he was telling at the time. I love uh, him so much. Oh, Just get ready for 60 seconds of joy here from Norm MacDonald here on Q101 with Brian and Kenzie. Well, let's get to O.J. O.J. Simpson's lawyers say they don't want the families of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman in the courtroom during the trial. They're afraid the presence of the family members will just remind O.J. of how much more killing he still has to do. Oh my God. <laughs> it was revealed this week that defense lawyer Johnny Cochran once abused his first wife. In his defense, Cochran said, hey, at least I didn't kill her like some people I know. <laughs> this week at the O.J. Simpson trial, the infamous bloody glove was finally introduced into evidence, and O.J. didn't help his case any by blurting out, there it is. I've been looking all over for that thing. <laughs> That's that. Oh, God. In his book, O.J. Simpson says that he would have taken a bullet or stood in front of a train for Nicole. Man, I'm going to tell you, that is some bad luck when the one guy who would have died for you kills you. That's <laughs> oh, you don't get God. worse luck than that. <laughs> Testimony during the final week provided some spellbinding moments. In a brilliant move during closing arguments, Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran put on the knit cap prosecutors say O.J. wore the night he committed the murders. Although O.J. may have heard his case when he suddenly blurted out, Hey, hey, easy with that. That's my lucky stabbing hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Norm MacDonald. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q. 101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. That's seven minutes away from 9 a.m. Your chance to go see the Chili Peppers anywhere you want. We'll do that. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. But first, it's that time when Case reviews a movie he hasn't seen, a big movie. For example, he's done Shawshank Redemption. Now he's seen that. He's seen Roadhouse now. He has seen Back to the Future. He has seen Braveheart. He has seen The Matrix. That's right. Do you feel like a better person now? You know, I really do. I really, <laughs> I really have enjoyed not only watching these, but we have a list that will take us through 2029 now yeah. with all of the movies that our crew members have recommended that I haven't seen. It's been really, really fun. And I was all prepared to watch Ghostbusters for the first time yesterday. I had never seen Ghost Ghostbusters before, not the original, not any of the remakes. And Dan Aykroyd's in town and the movie, the, you know, promoting a lot of stuff with his with uh, the, the, the Wonderverse thing yep, with the exactly. Ghostbusters. And then, of course, there's a movie out to another Ghostbusters movie, so it was a perfect time to do that one. Which is why we did Roadhouse, was to celebrate the release of the new Roadhouse. So I watched the original. We were going to do that with Ghostbusters. And then we found out that O.J. Simpson had passed away. O.J. Simpson died. 
And what do you do? <laughs> you certainly don't watch his football highlights. No, nope, no, nope, you don't do that. You discuss his complicated legacy. Yes. And you watch the naked gun. Complicated legacy that the news loves talking about. <laughs> you guys were so much better at staying committed to this bit. Than your weight loss challenge, I must say. This is way more fun. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Are, you're much more laser focused on this. I oh, actually, this, yeah. I eat while I'm watching the movies. It's awesome. Uh, it's, snacky <laughs> snack. <laughs> yeah. The problem with the weight loss challenge was I couldn't snack on anything. Yeah. Uh, you got yeah, the, you got probably the... some lettuce. You make them, uh, <laughs> like a rabbit. You got that Dune popcorn cup while you're watching the. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is, so the Naked Gun is obviously OJ's in the Naked Gun, so he made that switch. Now. It's a big movie, no question, but it's not like a Ghostbusters or a Shawshank. I know, because I hate to admit this, but I actually have not seen The Naked Gun. Wow. Which okay. bums me out, because I am I'm a movie person. Yeah, you've seen like so many things, you know, way before your time that have come uh, out, too. Yeah, I love, I am I am a movie person. Like, I got to say, like, I see everything. Yeah. Um, I have not seen The Naked Gun. The guy with the white hair is in it, right? Yes, Leslie Nielsen. Yep. <laughs> Got it. That guy? I always thought he would have made a really good Inspector Clouseau. Oh, yeah. Which would be a Pink Panther remake. Um, oh, because Steve Martin did, did that with Beyonce. Steve Martin did it. I always thought pre-Steve Martin, that guy, other white-headed man, would have been a really good Inspector Clouseau. I think you're right. Goofy. Good call. Well, it was Ozzy Nielsen. And let's get to the review as we start off always with the trailer from this movie, The Naked Gun. This city, there's crime on every street, but one man has seen enough. He's Lieutenant Frank Drebin. <laughs> Whatever scum did this, not one man on this force will rest for one minute until he's behind bars. Now let's grab a bite to eat. He's a good cop <laughs> who's having a bad day. His best friend. Whoa, everyone should have a friend like you. Is That's in a coma. Flying in the air. <laughs> as soon as Nordberg is better. He's welcome back at police squad. But I wouldn't wait until the last minute to fill out those organ donor cards. <laughs> and his city is in the hands of a master criminal with a sinister plan. I must kill the queen. <gasps> the Naked Gun from the files of police squad. Oh, God. And I haven't seen this movie in a while, but oh, it's so good. So, Case, The Naked Gun, uh, tell us about it. You watched it for the first time yesterday. Brian, I'm happy to report, even though you haven't seen it in a long time, if you enjoyed this movie at one point, I'm sure you would enjoy this movie again. Simply put, this is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is from this is from the lens of a 25-year-old. The movie came out in what, 92, I 98, think? 98 or 89, sorry. 89 yeah, the first yeah, yeah. one did. That's right. Oh, my God. So in the pantheon of of classic movie reviews that I've I've done, I would put Shawshank at the top of the list. But I would put this right behind it. I had so much fun watching this movie. The cameos from Weird Al, the cameo from Reggie Jackson. Priscilla Presley is the love interest in this movie. Is she? Yeah. yeah. Not That's to mention the fact that O.J. Simpson is in this movie as a guy, like a character. He's not playing O.J. He's playing a police detective. The irony. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so this is what? Five years before the murders. Yeah. And he was so beloved. You have to put that perspective. At this point, he was a beloved guy. That's what, so, again, I didn't live through the car chase and the trial and anything like that. I only know post-OJ as, like, it, there it, there was no context to describe him. He was just OJ Simpson, the guy who had lived the most interesting life in human history by that <laughs> point. Is there a, a, a comparison of how beloved he might be to a modern-day celebrity? At the time, of course. At the time, I mean... I'm trying to think of someone today. It's like The Rock? I, I guess in a way, yeah. That's yeah. a good that's a good reference point because he was an athlete, then became an actor, and then became I'm a sure sports announcer. I'm sure The Rock announcer. would really appreciate that. <laughs> the Rock. I'm sure he'd be ecstatic when his name came up in that conversation. <laughs> and The Rock just tuned out of Q101. He listens every morning. That's a shame we had him for a while. Yeah. I mean, you have to picture as well is that OJ, by that point, was just coming off being an athlete, been in some movies that was like these weird serious roles. Also, a sportscaster, 
never really done funny no, before. No, the only time I've seen him as an actor was in The Heat of the Night. He does one episode <laughs> of In the Heat of the Night. <laughs> How do you know that show? <laughs> because that show is on TV Land every day at 10 a.m., and it's awesome. Oh, my that God. That show is phenomenal. Are you sure you're 25 years I old? I know. It's a weird old man opinion to have, oh but I love God. In the Heat of the Night. O.J. is in it's an right episode. Before <laughs> yeah, that's it's right before MASH. It's actually lineup. It's actually right before Andy Griffith, which is why I watch it. Then you got Sanford and Son and Good Times and all the way through. a good day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> No, this movie is absolutely hilarious. It makes me mad. And maybe, hopefully, you can come around to my train of thought here. It makes me mad that a movie like Braveheart exists. Because I did not enjoy <laughs> Braveheart. It is I want to punch you in the face. I, yeah. I want to punch myself sometimes, but not now. Like, you don't have to do this. No, no, no. You don't have to do what you're about to say. Let me make a point here. Okay, make your point. Braveheart is this three-hour, melodramatic, plotting it just goes nowhere. It's boring. It's whatever. This movie, do you know how long this movie is, Brian? By the way, all that, it's all what he just said there, by the way. Do you know how long this movie is? I'm guessing it's four, uh, an hour and 40 minutes. It's an hour and 25. Wow. That First of all, that's how long movies should be. New yeah. rule, hour 25. Not to turn what the bill you, bar here. What are you, five? <laughs> <laughs> New rule, movies are an hour and 25 minutes long. Uh-huh. Every second of this movie was hilarious. The, the physical comedy of it was great. The dialogue was brilliant. There were great uh, great visual gags, like the anti-graffiti wall where people would graffiti it, and then it would graffiti them back. <laughs> and it's just, everything about this movie was fantastic, not to mention the fact that the plot is that they're trying to save an assassinate, assassination attempt of the queen, where she attends an A's, or sorry, not an A's, but an Angels versus Mariners <laughs> baseball game. <laughs> Where the main character is singing the national anthem, he poses as an opera singer, and then yeah. he poses as the home plate umpire. Oh, I forgot about that. That was like fights. Miss Congeniality. Oh. <laughs> Kenzie, you have to see this movie. Here's what I'm wondering, Brian, because you would be a better gauge than, than me on this. Yeah. I think Kenzie could watch it, and I think anybody listening, if they've got a kid that's probably like 8 to 12 years old, like, Kenzie, I feel like your 9-year-old son would love this movie because it's I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's a good one for him to watch. It's not super inappropriate, and there's so much visual comedy in it that I think a a kid could get it. Yeah. Really? You you, you just got to forget OJ. What about the naked part and naked gun? Anything going on there? No. No, you see in the opening sequence, because I did note this, that they they do drive a police car through a, a women's locker room shower, and you see some scantily clad backs, but no full frontal nudity. Yeah, There's your it, skin over here. It's like 35 seconds in. <laughs> 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 if it was PG, right? I think so. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it, but old PG is no. like the new R. <laughs> <laughs> because I have put on a few PG slash PG-13 movies. And it's like f bombs, boobs, <laughs> sex scene. I'm like, okay, well, I don't. How, what did it take to be an R movie? I'm not back even, then I'm not even sure they're swearing in this movie, to be honest. Not, like, I, not I, really. The, the rating is PG-13, but I I feel like if it came out now, it would actually be PG because there's really outside of some innuendo, there's not really any gratuitous sex. There's not really any gratuitous violence. Anything that's done is really cartoony and campy. Well, all the violence was toward OJ. I know the opening <laughs> scene. When OJ is trying to break up, maybe now that I describe this, maybe she shouldn't watch this with her nine-year-old. OJ is trying to break up a heroin deal, and he gets lit up by gunfire. Oh, thank you for the recommendation <laughs> for my child. Yeah. But after he gets lit up by gunfire, he hits his head, and then he burns his hand, and then he falls overboard on the ship. Yeah. It's it's so funny. Every second of this yeah, movie they have was a Sesame so funny. Street episode, very similar. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you like it. And it stands up a 35-year-old movie at this point. This is, and I, I want to make you know our intentions clear, it's certainly not to glorify O.J. Simpson. No. You know, he was an awful man. It's such a shame because he should have been such a great comedic actor. This was the this would have put him on the did put him on the map, yeah. but it, and it was a, there was a couple other movies sequels and then then he became a murderer. So yeah. you know, <laughs> I would I would have much rather remember him as the athlete turned comedy star than what he is, which is a murderer. Right, it's a bummer. It, it, well, it's it's tragic. <laughs> yeah, it really, <laughs> it was a lot of levels. <laughs> Wasn't OJ Simpson also on like like a Muppet like episode? I'm pretty sure With he was. Children, yeah. I vaguely remember that. He was on everything. He really tried to get into children's entertainment. Yeah. He was, like, I, I gotta he get was in on here. so much of mainstream and, you know, fun things after that especially. So, I guess my last point here, because, you know, with Shawshank and Braveheart and Matrix, we can break down the plot and go over all these details. But this is pure slapstick comedy for 90 minutes, so there's not a lot of plot points I want to hit. 
But Brian, I have a reason for you and anybody else that, that has bonded with us over the last few years over a specific TV show. I have a reason for you guys to watch this movie again. Mm. Do you know who the mayor was in this movie? <sighs> I don't know for sure. I can't Can think I of guess? it. guess? Yes, please. Is it Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> 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 the mayor of this movie is not Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, well, Why sure. is that a bad guess? No. You'd be a mayor. It's <laughs> Nancy Marchand, who was Tony Soprano's mom in The Sopranos. Oh, yes. She plays the uppity mayor in this movie. That's right. And it's Tony's mom. Oh, my God. That's insane to think about. You only know her as the curmudgeon awful Livia Soprano. Yeah. And she's the mayor in the Naked Gun movie. And hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Major. Major. I was like way off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were a little bit off. <laughs> well, does that convince you to watch it now, Kenzie? What he said or no? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, newborn and a nine-year-old. Is that a lot of? Is that a lot of? What movie should I watch tonight? Uh, the newborn's moments? not gonna. He's not. He'll, he'll be a fine. Uh, he'll but the, be but fine. Tristan will definitely understand what's going on. I feel like your nine-year-old should watch it. I think he'd love it. Yeah, fine. I, I'm not that strict. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Kenzie. On Q 101.